Welcome, my friends, and let me tell a heartwarming story of resilience, love, and the unexpected miracles that can happen when a good soul opens his or her heart. Enjoy the story. Lakeville, Ohio was usually a quiet town, but on that fateful morning, the peace was shattered by a chilling scene. No, please, I don't want to go, cried seven-year-old Karina, tears streaming down her face as she struggled against the iron grip of Miss Hannigan, the stern, angular woman attempting to force her into a waiting car. You can't make me! Enough of this nonsense! barked Miss Hannigan, her patience wearing thin. Get in the car this instant or I'll have you committed, you ungrateful brat! Karina knew it was hopeless to resist. Her grandmother, her sole guardian, and the only family she had ever known, had passed away suddenly just days ago. With nowhere else to go, Karina was being sent to live at the Lakeview Home for Girls, a grim orphanage on the outskirts of town. I won't stay there forever, Karina vowed under her breath as she reluctantly climbed into the car. Someday I'll find a real family. Someday I'll run away from that awful place. As the car pulled away, neighbors began to gather, shaking their heads in disapproval. The nerve of that Hannigan woman, tutted Mrs. Gilroy from across the street, treating a child that way and so soon after losing her dear grandmother too. It's disgraceful. Mark my words, agreed Mr. Larson gravely. No good will come of this. That poor girl deserves better. Ungrateful wretches, the lot of them, ranted Miss Hannigan from the passenger seat as the car sped down a dusty country road, leaving Lakeville far behind. After all I do for those miserable urchins at the home, and still the simpletons of this town dare to criticize me. In the back seat, Karina squeezed her eyes shut and pretended to sleep, not wanting to draw Miss Hannigan's wrath. But behind her closed lids, memories of happier times flickered through her mind. Karina recalled warm summer days spent in grandmother's cozy little house, the smell of fresh-baked cookies wafting from the kitchen. She thought of crisp autumn evenings curled up by the fireplace as Grandmother read aloud from Karina's favorite storybooks. She remembered the twinkling lights and tinsel of Christmas mornings, giggling as she and Grandmother exchanged lovingly wrapped presents. But now all of that was gone, snatched away in an instant along with Grandmother's life. Karina felt the sting of tears again, an ache of loneliness and loss. How would she ever smile again in a world without her grandmother's love? As if sensing her anguish, the car's driver, a stocky man with a kind face, caught Karina's eye in the rearview mirror and gave her a sympathetic look before quickly returning his gaze to the road ahead. Karina didn't know it then, but that driver, Bob Hartley, would soon change the course of her life forever. Sometime later, the car arrived at its destination. Karina opened her eyes and felt her heart sink at the sight before her. The Lakeview Home for Girls, a hulking brick building that loomed against the gray October sky like something out of a ghost story. Barren trees lined the winding gravel drive, their skeletal branches scratching at the dreary clouds above. Miss Hannigan hustled Karina out of the car, up the steps, and through the orphanage's heavy wooden doors with brusque efficiency. Welcome to your new home, she said flatly as the doors creaked shut with a sound like a slamming crypt. But as Karina stepped into the gloom of the orphanage foyer to begin her new life, she felt a sudden secret thrill of hopeful defiance, because there, pressing against her collarbone, hidden beneath her coat, was an unexpected gift, a delicate pendant necklace, discreetly slipped into her palm by Bob the driver as she'd exited his car. For luck, Bob had whispered with a conspiratorial wink, it was meant for my daughter Emma, but I think you need it more. Stay strong, little miss. Things will get better. You'll see. Karina didn't fully understand the pendant's significance in that moment, but she clutched it tightly all the same, drawing courage from its delicate weight, a secret talisman of hope against the dark days ahead. Fired! How could they fire you, Bob? gasped Vera Hartley, as her husband walked through the door of their humble home that evening, his shoulders slumped in defeat. You're the most dependable driver they've got. Bob sighed and shook his head glumly. That shrew Hannigan lodged a complaint against me for questioning how she treated that little girl, said I was being insubordinate. I tried to explain things to management, but they weren't hearing it. Vera went to him and took his rough hands in her own, 
offering a supportive squeeze. Times had been tough for the young couple already. They were barely scraping by on Bob's income as it was, with a mortgage to pay and their precocious eight-year-old Emma to support. And Vera had recently begun to suspect there might soon be another mouth to feed as well. We'll get through this, darling. You'll find another job. Don't let that horrible woman get you down, Vera consoled. You did the decent thing standing up for that poor child. I'm proud of you. Bob pulled her into an appreciative embrace, taking solace in her steadfast love. But silently, anxiously, his mind churned. How would he keep a roof over their heads until he was hired somewhere else? Winter was coming on. What if the next baby arrived before he had a steady paycheck again? Would his family end up out on the streets? Days turned into weeks as Bob scoured the town for work, each lead ending in a dead end or a slammed door in his face. Despair began to creep into the Hartley household despite Vera's determined cheer and Emma's innocent faith in her father. Even Bob's own usually unshakable optimism began to flag. Until, that is, a burst of hope arrived in the form of an unexpected visit from Bob's old school chum, Mike Karchevsky, one blustery afternoon. Mike, a longtime railroad engineer, had heard of Bob's troubles through the local grapevine and come to make an enticing proposition. Listen, Bob, I know you've fallen on some hard times, said Mike gravely, leaning across the kitchen table as Vera poured the men some strong coffee. But it just so happens I might have a solution, if you're game. At this point, I'll take anything, replied Bob wearily. Spill it, Mike, what have you got? The rail line's been struggling to keep conductors on the millfield route. That's the overnight run transporting miners and factory men between shifts, explained Mike. It's solid pay but a mighty tough crowd, especially coming off a long day's labor. The last few conductors couldn't hack it, quit within a month. But Bob, you've got a way with people, a real gentlemanly manner. I think you could handle those worker blokes. Bob stroked his chin thoughtfully. He had to admit the offer was tempting. Good wages for honest work. And hadn't he always admired the romance and grit of the railways? But then he thought of Karina and how she'd looked at him with such raw trust as he'd slipped her Emma's pendant. Could he really spend his nights away from his family, facing down the rough-and-tumble men Mike described, when his wife and daughter might need him? He looked to Vera questioningly, torn. To his surprise, she smiled and nodded in approval. You should take it, Bob, she encouraged. Emma wandered into the kitchen and latched onto Bob's leg, blinking up at him innocently. Daddy, did you find a job? Are you going to drive a train? In that moment, with his wife's blessing and his daughter's admiration shining in her eyes, Bob knew his path was decided. He turned to Mike and thrust out a hand to shake. I'm in, he said firmly. Just tell me when to start. The night air was cool and clear as Bob stood on the open rear platform of the passenger car, surveying the railroad tracks stretching out behind the train like twin silver ribbons in the moonlight. His first shift as a conductor on the Millfield route was going smoothly so far, thanks in no small part to Mike's sage advice on managing the miners and factory workers who rode the line. Suddenly, a commotion arose from inside the car, angry shouts and the sound of scuffling. Alarmed, Bob rushed back in to find a knot of agitated passengers gathered around one of the benches. Step aside, please, he commanded, pushing his way through the throng. To his shock, Huddled on the bench at the center of the ruckus was a small, quivering figure, a little girl in a tattered coat with long, unkempt hair and terrified eyes. Bob recognized her instantly, his heart seizing in his chest. Karina? He breathed incredulously. At the sound of his voice, Karina lifted her head, blinking up at him wonderingly. Mr. Bob? Is that really you? A burly miner lunged forward, jabbing a finger toward Karina. I found this little gutter snipe hiding in the luggage rack, he snarled, probably trying to stow away the scamp. Now hold on just a minute, interjected Bob sternly, putting himself between Karina and the angry crowd. I won't have treated like that. Let's all simmer down and let the girl explain herself. The passengers reluctantly backed off as Bob knelt down to Karina's level, giving her an encouraging smile. It's all right, sweetheart. You're safe now, he soothed. Can you tell me what you're doing here? Why aren't you at the orphanage? 
Karina swallowed hard, a single tear tracing down her grubby cheek. I... I ran away, she confessed tremulously. I couldn't take it anymore, Mr. Bob. It was horrible there, cold and dark and lonely. Miss Hannigan was so cruel. I had to get away. She reached up and pulled aside her collar, revealing Emma's pendant still fastened around her neck. You said things would get better, but they didn't. So I decided to go look for a new mama and daddy myself, since no one at the orphanage seemed to want me. Bob's heart broke at her words, at the desperate hope and fear mingled on her small face. He placed a gentle hand on her shoulder, marveling at her bravery and resilience. Oh, Karina, I'm so sorry. You deserve so much better. Let me help. The onlooking passengers stirred, their earlier anger replaced by awkward pity. Poor little mite, one muttered. Sounds like she's had a right rough go of it, said another. Bob stood, a fierce protectiveness kindling in his chest. He knew what he had to do. It was risky, unexpected, but it was right. Karina, he said softly, would you like to come home with me tonight? I'd like you to meet my family, my wife Vera and my daughter Emma. She's about your age. I think you'd like them very much. Karina tilted her face up to him, hardly daring to believe. Really? You'd... you'd take me to your house? I could meet your little girl? If you want to, then yes, absolutely, confirmed Bob warmly. Slowly, Karina reached out a small tentative hand to grasp his. A fragile smile crept across her face. Yes. She whispered, yes, please. The miners and factory workers watched the exchange somberly. But as Karina's joy and relief became clear, a current of tender feeling seemed to spread through the car. These were rough, stoic men, not prone to sentiment. But they were also husbands and fathers, men who knew the preciousness of an innocent child's trust. As Bob gently ushered Karina up the aisle toward his private cabin at the front of the car, something extraordinary began to happen. One by one, the burly passengers reached into their pockets and began to press small offerings into Karina's hands as she passed. Coins, crumpled bills, even the occasional treasured keepsake. Here now take this little miss, said one grizzled miner, dropping a nickel into her palm with a bashful smile. Buy yourself a bit of candy, eh? And this, it ain't much but it'll help fill your belly, another chimed in handing her a slightly squashed pork bun from his lunch pail. Soon, Karina's arms were overflowing with these humble tokens of kindness. Money, snacks, even a tiny hand-carved wooden doll. The men looked on with suspiciously shiny eyes, moved by Karina's story and her pluck. By the time she reached Bob's cabin, she was beaming, her earlier fears momentarily forgotten in the face of such unexpected generosity. Bob, too, felt overcome with emotion at the spontaneous goodwill of these hardened laborers. They might appear gruff on the outside, but their actions revealed the compassionate hearts that beat within. He resolved to do his utmost to protect and care for Karina, to prove himself worthy of his passenger's trust in his character. As Bob and Karina entered his cabin, she turned to him with an elated grin, her eyes bright. Did you see, Mr. Bob? Did you see how nice they all were? Maybe things really will get better now. Despite the uncertainty that lay ahead, Bob couldn't help but return her smile. For the first time since losing his job, his future felt full of promise again. He didn't know what the next day would bring, but he knew one thing for certain. Thanks to Karina, his life had changed forever. It was late by the time Bob's train finally pulled into the station, its brakes hissing as it ground to a halt. He took a sleeping Karina into his arms, careful not to jostle her awake, and carried her down onto the moonlit platform. The coin purse full of the miner's donations and her other gifts were tucked securely in his coat pockets. He hailed a cab and gave the driver his address, his nerves fluttering as they rolled through the quiet streets toward home. What would Vera think of him bringing home a young orphan girl in the middle of the night? Would Emma accept and welcome a new friend? He prayed his family would understand his intentions. A lamp still burned in the front window as the cab pulled up to his house. Vera must have waited up for him. Strengthening his resolve, Bob carefully lifted Karina out and paid the driver, then climbed the worn wooden steps to his own front door. He shifted Karina to one arm so he could turn the knob. As he stepped inside, Vera emerged from the kitchen, 
drying her hands on her apron. Her eyes widened at the sight of the child nestled against his chest. Bob, who on earth? She began, but then recognition sparked in her eyes. Wait, is that? Karina, he confirmed softly. The little girl from the orphanage. She ran away and stowed away on my train. I couldn't just leave her. To his immense relief, Vera's expression melted into one of tender concern. She approached and stroked a hand gently over Karina's tangled hair. Of course you couldn't, poor little lamb. She must have been so scared, so desperate to escape like that. Just then, Emma appeared at the top of the stairs, rubbing sleep from her eyes. She gasped when she saw Karina. Daddy, is that her? Is that the girl you told us about? Bob smiled up at his daughter reassuringly. Yes, little duck. This is Karina. She's had a very hard time and needs somewhere safe to stay for a while. I thought we could help her. Would you like that? Emma practically flew down the stairs in her excitement. Oh, yes, Daddy. Yes, she squealed, circling Bob to get a better look at Karina's face. I always wanted a sister. We can share my room and play dolls and braid each other's hair. Her gleeful chatter finally roused Karina, who blinked groggily and straightened in Bob's arms. She stared wonderingly at Emma's beaming face, then up at Vera's kindly one. A hopeful little smile tugged at her mouth. Is this... Are you Mr. Bob's family? We are, sweetheart, affirmed Vera warmly. I'm Vera, and this little ball of energy is Emma. We're so very glad to meet you, Karina, Vera continued. We've heard such good things about you from Bob. Welcome to our home. Karina ducked her head shyly, overwhelmed by the genuine affection in Vera's voice. She couldn't remember the last time she'd felt so instantly cared for by virtual strangers. Tears pricked at her eyes, and she impulsively threw her arms around Vera's waist in a tight hug. Vera made a soft, sympathetic sound and returned the embrace, rubbing Karina's back soothingly. There now, darling girl, you're safe here with us. Everything's going to be all right. Emma clapped her hands eagerly. Ooh, can Karina stay in my room tonight, Mama? Can we make her a bed on the floor? We can have a slumber party. Bob chuckled at his daughter's enthusiasm. I think that's a fine idea, little duck. Why don't you run and fetch some spare blankets and pillows for our guest? Right away, Daddy, agreed Emma exuberantly, already bounding back up the stairs to prepare a space for Karina. Vera smoothed Karina's hair and smiled down at her. Are you hungry, sweetheart? I have some soup I can warm up for you, and I'm sure I can find an old nightgown of Emma's for you to sleep in. Fresh tears welled in Karina's eyes at the easy kindness, but for the first time in forever, they were happy tears. She pressed herself closer to Vera, nodding against her midriff. Vera looked to Bob over Karina's head, her own eyes glistening with emotion. In that silent gaze, a world of feeling passed between the husband and wife unspoken understanding, shared purpose, and abiding love. In mere hours, their family had unexpectedly grown, their hearts and home opening to take in a child in need. It would mean hard work, sacrifice, and no small amount of faith. But in that moment, glancing down at Karina's dark curls and Emma's excited grin as she lugged a heap of bedding down the stairs, both Bob and Vera felt absolutely certain. This was meant to be. This was their new path forward. Karina had come into their lives like a small miracle, and now that they'd found her, they would never let her go. Karina was already fast asleep on her cot of blankets at the foot of Emma's bed, worn out by an evening of warm food, a hot bath, and Emma's lively chatter. She was dressed in a borrowed nightgown, her pendant safely around her neck. Her tattered clothes had been whisked away for washing by Vera. Emma, too, had finally drifted off after extracting a solemn promise from Bob that Karina could stay not just the night, but the whole next day, too, for more playtime. Bob and Vera sat together on the edge of their bed, speaking in hushed tones so as not to wake the slumbering girls. Bob, I've been thinking, began Vera slowly, about Karina, about how much Emma has taken to her already, about how heartbroken she must have been to run away like that to stow away on a train just to escape that orphanage. I know, sighed Bob heavily. It kills me to think of sending her back there. You didn't see that place, Vera. She was miserable, frightened, desperate for a loving family. I just couldn't bear to. I want to adopt her, 
Vera interjected softly. Bob's head snapped up, his eyes widening. What? Vera, are you serious? Vera nodded, her expression resolved. I am. I know it's sudden. I know we'll have to scrimp and save even more. But Bob, we have so much love to give. Emma has so much love to give. Karina needs love. She needs parents, a home. We could be her home. She laid a hand over her still flat stomach. We were already talking about having another child. Why not this child? Why not Karina? Just think. She could be ours, Bob. Our daughter. Bob gaped at her, overcome, hardly daring to hope that he'd heard correctly. Then slowly, gradually, a smile of pure wonder spread across his face. He took Vera's hand from her middle and raised it to his lips, kissing her knuckles reverently. My darling, my amazing, generous, glorious wife, you've read my mind and my heart as always, he declared elatedly. I was going to suggest the very same thing. Vera's eyes shone with unshed tears as she grinned. Bob pulled her into an exuberant embrace, overcome with emotion as he pictured the future that now seemed possible. Emma and Karina playing together, studying together, growing up side by side as true sisters. Their family of three forever expanded to four, bound by the unbreakable ties of love. Later, as they settled under the covers, Bob draped an arm across his wife's waist and nuzzled into her rose-scented hair, marveling at her strength, her boundless compassion. He was still unemployed, the future was still uncertain. But now, with Vera by his side and two precious daughters to fight for, he felt newly energized, cloaked in purpose. He would give his family the life they deserved, would love them with every last ounce of will in his body. Starting with Karina, starting with bringing that brave little orphan permanently into the shelter of their hearts and home. Two months later, Bob stood beside Vera and Emma outside the Lakeville courthouse, squinting against the bright winter sun as they awaited the arrival of the car carrying the newest member of their family. The past weeks had been a flurry of activity, Bob securing his position on the railroad thanks to Mike's unwavering faith in him, Vera and Emma preparing the house for Karina's arrival, and all of them navigating the often Byzantine process of adoption. There had been moments of doubt, of frustration, but they had pressed on, determined to make Karina a Hartley. At long last, the day had arrived. The adoption was approved, the final papers signed. Miss Hannigan, irate at losing control over Karina's fate, had been summarily dismissed from the orphanage due to her documented mistreatment of the children. Vera, in particular, had taken great satisfaction in that particular turn of events. Car tires crunched on gravel, snapping Bob back to the present. The vehicle rolled to a stop, and the rear passenger door swung open. A pair of polished black shoes stepped out onto the running board, followed by the hem of a new forest green wool coat as their owner slid down from the seat. Then, Karina was launching herself across the sidewalk and flying into the waiting arms of her new family, laughing and weeping all at once. Mama, Papa, Emma, she cried joyfully as Vera scooped her up and spun her around, peppering her face with kisses. Bob and Emma piled on, embracing their girls in a tangled knot of arms and tearful smiles. We did it, Peanut, crowed Emma, using the pet name she'd begun calling Karina almost immediately that first night two months ago. You're officially my sister now. I am, Karina agreed wonderingly, pulling back to beam at all of them. She was hardly recognizable from the forlorn little orphan who'd stowed away on Bob's train. Her dark hair was cut into a tidy bob and tied back with a ribbon, her cheeks glowed with health, and her eyes sparkled with happiness. She threw her arms around Bob's neck, burying her face in his shoulder. Thank you, Papa, she whispered. Thank you for finding me, for wanting me. Oh, Karina, he murmured, stroking her hair. It's us who should thank you. You found us, too. You made our family complete. He leaned down and stage whispered in her ear. But you know, as much as we all love you, I think you're going to have to get used to sharing top billing, because in about seven months, you and Emma are going to have a new baby brother or sister. Karina pulled back, her eyes enormous as Vera rested a hand on her still slender stomach and winked. Then the little girl let out a delighted squeal 
and did another spinning, skipping dance of joy right there on the courthouse steps. Emma joining in and chanting, We're going to be big sisters. We're going to be big sisters. Bob wrapped an arm around Vera's waist and shook his head, grinning fit to burst as he watched his daughters celebrate. To think less than a year ago, his life had been so different. Just a husband and father, a driver collecting paychecks. Now he was all that and more, a conductor, a adoptive parent, a soon-to-be father of three. And it was all thanks to the extraordinary little girl who'd leapt into his life and heart that fateful night, Karina Hartley. The orphan no more, the girl who'd proven beyond a doubt that hope and love could overcome any hardship. She was home now, truly, and forever. And as Bob gathered her and Emma close once more, he knew that with his family by his side, every day would be a new adventure and a new chance to build the life of joy and purpose they all deserved.